Summary of the Dead by James Joyce The story starts with Lily, Julia, Mary Jane, and Kate welcoming guests to their yearly Christmas party in Dublin. Lily is taking the men's clothes while Julia and Kate help the women at the party. Gabriel, the main character and the nephew of Julia and Kate, and his wife Greta finally get there after 10 o'clock. When Lily takes Gabriel's coat, he sees that she has grown up and become a pretty young woman. He says that she is getting close to being old enough to get married, but Lily snaps at him. Gabriel gives her a tip, which he wants her to take in the spirit of Christmas. She thanks him awkwardly as he goes upstairs to the party, still thinking about how mean her answer was. As Gabriel walks into the party, he looks at his notes for the speech he will give later that night. He wonders if quoting Robert Browning will be too hard for his audience to understand. Greta's aunts and Gabriel's aunts come out of the dressing room to meet their favorite nephew, Gabriel. Kate and Julia ask Gabriel why Gabriel likes to wear Wellington so much, and he says that they are very famous on the continent. When Freddie Malins shows up, the talk ends. Freddie often shows up drunk, so Ed Kate asks Gabriel to keep an eye on him. As soon as the waltz is over, another guy named Mr. Brown takes three younger women into the back room, serves them all strong drinks, and flirts with them until they lose interest. Kate and another person at the party walk into the room and say it's time to pair up for the next dance. Gabriel thinks about his dead mother as Mary Jane finishes her piano performance. He credits her with many of his successes, but he also resents her for not liking Greta. Gabriel is paired with Miss Ivers, who works with him, for the next dance. He sees that she is wearing a Celtic knot brooch, and she says almost right away that she has read Gabriel's column in the Daily Express, a newspaper known for its unionist and conservative views. She makes fun of him by calling him a West Briton and scolds him for not being a patriot. Then, Miss Ivers quickly tries to lighten the mood by inviting Gabriel and his wife on a summer trip to the Aran Isles, which are off the west coast of Ireland. Gabriel says no and tells her that he wants to go on a bike trip somewhere on the continent. Miss Ivers says that he doesn't care about his own country. Gabriel gets angry and says that he's had enough of Ireland. The argument makes him angry because he thinks Miss Ivers was trying to make him look bad. Gabriel tells Greta about Miss Ivers' offer, but he turns it down, which makes Greta sad. Greta goes out with her friends, and Gabriel decides to get back at Miss Ivers by insulting her in a sneaky way in his speech. Aunt Julia sings a song, which brings up the Pope's choice to keep women out of church choirs. Aunt Kate is very angry about the decision, but she doesn't want to criticize the Pope. Mary Jane tries to calm the situation down after Aunt Kate's angry reaction by saying that it's time for dinner. Gabriel sees Miss Ivers getting her coat while Greta and Mary Jane try to convince her to stay as the guests head to the dining room. Gabriel offers to walk Miss Ivers home, but she says she doesn't want him to and rushes out the door. He wonders if the fact that they had a fight was what made her leave. Gabriel's mind is put at ease when Aunt Kate calls him in to cut the goose. He is very comfortable at the head of the table. Gabriel doesn't join in the talk about opera, and he's the only one who doesn't eat Aunt Julia's brown pudding. When the guests are done eating, dessert is given and drinks are refilled so that Gabriel can give his speech. In his speech, he talks about his aunts and the values of their age. He stresses how important it is to keep old values like hospitality alive. At the end of the speech, there is a toast, and everyone sings for he's a jolly good fellow. The guests say their goodbyes in the hall. Gabriel tells a story about his glue-boiling grandfather Patrick Morcan, who took his horse Johnny to the park one day. The horse started walking around the statue of King Billy in loops over and over again, as if he were back in the mill or in love with the stone horse King Billy was riding. After laughing at the story, the guests start to leave. As the guests leave, Gabriel sees a woman on the steps whose face is hidden in the shadows. It's his wife, and she's listening to piano music that's drifting down the stairs. The music stops, and the people who are still there go out into the cold, dark night to find a taxi. Gabriel looks up ahead and sees Greta walking with Mr. Bartell Darcy. Suddenly, he feels a love towards her. 
He feels a strong sense of longing and remembers all of their first times together. He wishes they could leave their boring lives now and go back to when they were young. The group gets into a taxi, and until Greta and Gabriel get out, they stay mostly quiet. Gabriel is suddenly filled with lust as Greta leans on him. As they get closer to the hotel where they are staying, Gabriel feels like they are getting away from their boring lives. The porter lights a candle and leads them to their room, which is mostly dark except for a ghostly light coming in through the window. Gabriel can tell that Greta is thinking about something, so he puts aside his desire for a moment and asks her what's on her mind. Greta suddenly starts crying and says she was thinking about the song she was listening to while walking up the stairs. She tells Gabriel that it makes her think of Michael Fury, her first love. Gabriel is upset that Greta might be thinking about another guy when he has only been thinking about her. Gabriel asks Greta if she wanted to go with Miss Ivers to Galway over the summer to see this boy. Greta tells Gabriel that the boy is dead. She says that Michael worked at the gasworks and that he died because he came to see her when he was sick, even though it was raining. He died for her. Gabriel is terrified by the thought that someone else cared about his wife enough to die for her. Greta falls asleep, and as Gabriel watches her, he suddenly realizes that he has never had a love that was worth dying for. He also realizes that his wife is her own person with her own past, and that he hasn't had much of an impact on her life. Gabriel feels the world of the dead all of a sudden, and he sees his own life fading away and becoming useless in this grey, impalpable world. He can hear the snow falling outside, covering both live and dead things. About the author James Joyce grew up in Rathgar, which is a suburb of Dublin. He went to University College and started publishing literary reviews, songs, and plays while he was there. After college, he went to Paris to study medicine for a short time. Joyce's mother got sick in 1903, just one year later, and he moved back to Dublin to take care of her. After he met his wife, they left Dublin and lived in many places, including Yugoslavia and Italy. During World War I, they fled to Zurich. Joyce only went back to Dublin four times, but he wrote a lot about the city and Ireland in general in many of his works. Joyce got advice from the artist Ezra Pound, who helped him get a portrait of the artist as a young man published in 1916. Joyce's first book, Dubliners, came out two years earlier. It was a collection of 15 short stories, one of which was The Dead. Joyce became known as a modernist writer because of these books, and his fame only grew after Ulysses came out in 1922. When it came out, Ulysses was praised as a work and banned in many countries for being too rude. Joyce kept writing after Ulysses. In 1939, he wrote Finnegan's Wake, which was even more avant-garde than Ulysses. Joyce always drank a lot, and problems from surgery on a perforated ulcer led to his death in 1941. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.